Hi everyone, my name is Mari and I work with the Young Scientist Program at USC. Today in front of me, I have two mason jars about half filled with water. And in one hand, I have a ping pong ball and the other hand, I have a golf ball. And they're about the same size. Well, the golf ball might be a little bit bigger, but in general, they are the same size. So now I'm gonna put the ping pong ball in one glass and the golf ball in the other glass. What do you think is gonna happen? So as you can see, the water is the same in both glasses. So like I said, ping pong ball in one glass, golf ball in the other glass. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the ping pong ball floated while the golf ball sank. Why would that happen if they're both the same size? The answer to this mystery is buoyant force, which is the topic of today's lesson. Buoyant force or buoyancy was discovered by a scientist named Archimedes over 2,000 years ago. He noticed that when he got into his bathtub, water would spill over the edge. So what exactly is buoyant force? Buoyancy is a scientific principle that states that if you place an object in water, the weight of the water displaced by the object is equal to the weight of the object. So let's break that down. When you place an object, in water, the level of the water rises. The rising of the water is called displacement, and the height that the water rises changes with every object. Let's take a look at the other glass that I put the ping pong, in, ping pong ball in earlier. The two glasses started with the exact same amount of water, but after I added each of the balls to them, they are now different heights. The water in the glass with the golf ball is higher than the glass with the ping pong ball. This means that more water is being displaced in this glass than in this glass. So why is that? It's because even though the two balls are the same size, the golf ball weighs more than the ping pong ball. In other words, it has a higher density or is more dense. Density is how much stuff is packed into a certain space. So in the case of a ping pong ball versus a golf ball, there is more stuff or matter packed into the golf ball than the ping pong ball, even though they are the same size. Water also has a certain density, and if the density of the object is greater than the density of the water, the object will sink. If the object is less dense than the water, it will float. So now we have talked about both density and buoyant force. And a force can be either a pulling force or a pushing force. Buoyant force is a pushing force. It pushes an object up and works against gravity, which pulls objects down to the earth. Now that we know what buoyancy and density are, we can talk about our activity for today. What we will be doing today is investigating how boats work. Boats are really cool because just looking at a boat, you would probably think that it would sink to the bottom of the ocean, but somehow these massive things can float and carry large numbers of people. Let's look at how boats work. Based on what we know about buoyancy, in order for a boat to float, it must be less dense than the water based on how much space it takes up. So we should use light materials and make it large enough so that it wouldn't weigh more than the water it displaces. So just like I showed you with the ping pong ball and the golf ball, the buoyant force pushes up on the bottom of the boat while gravity pulls the boat down from the top. Today, the materials you will need are aluminum foil, a bowl with water in it, and if you're worried about spilling, grab a bigger bowl to put this bowl in, so just in case the water flows over the sides, the bigger bowl will catch the water. You will also need something to test your boat. So that can be anything that you don't mind getting wet um, that weighs a little bit. I'm gonna be using these metal washers. Um, you could use a toy that's okay to get wet, but just make sure that someone gives you permission to use whatever it is that you're using if it's not yours, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start by building our boat out of aluminum foil. And yep, all you'll need is one sheet of aluminum foil. So you're going to want to make it shaped like a boat. 
So I'm gonna make mine look a little bit like new, I think. And you can make it really in any shape you want. But remember what we learned about boats, that you want there to be a lot of area on the bottom of the boat to make it float better. You can just kind of, see what I'm doing is I'm just kind of tucking in the sides here and then I will shape it and make it secure so no water can enter my boat. So here is my boat. Very simple. Just kind of fold the aluminum foil together. You shouldn't really need tape. You can just, if you fold it tight enough, it should be fine. And so now we're going to test our boats, okay? Oh, mine's a little bit too big for my bowl. Let me make this a little bit smaller. A boat can be really any shape you want. Mine's actually going to be a circle today. So now I'm going to angle my camera down so you guys can see my boat in the water and then watch me test it, okay? So now I'm going to put my boat in the water and it floats. First step is good. Now I'm going to test it by adding my washers one at a time and see how long it'll float. Okay, so here's one, two, three. I don't know if you guys can see, but the boat is actually getting further into the water with every washer that I add. Do you see there it dipped down quite a bit? Oh, and I think it's almost touching the bottom of my bowl. Maybe I should have gotten a deeper bowl, but oh, it's still holding all the washers. So my boat did not sink. However, I think it is pretty close to touching the bottom of the bowl now that all six washers are in there. And you could see as I added each washer, it got a little bit deeper into the into the bowl. So now that we've tested our boats, we've really kind of gotten the idea of what buoyancy and density are. Let's recap our lesson really quickly, right? So density is how much stuff is packed into a certain amount of space. So in our golf ball, there was more stuff packed inside than there was in the ping pong ball. And then that determines the buoyancy of the object, because if the thing that you put inside the water is more dense than the water, it will sink, but if it's less dense, it will float. And buoyant force and gravity act opposite of each other. So that's our lesson for today. I hope you learned a little bit about how boats work, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.